Hi everybody, I just wanted to go over today's events and today was actually 5, 6 and then you take 4 and 1 and 2 is 7, so 5, 6, 7, kind of an interesting day. Um, I wanted to go over something really quick about this, uh, a hero student who pepper sprayed and disarmed a shotgun wielding man. Okay, I'm not uh, going to focus on anything being a hoax possibly false flag but what most that I want to focus on is the fact that uh, you know what's the agenda behind these news stories so today or yesterday I should say because this is two in the morning now um, they had a young man who came in wielding a shotgun from a Christian University in Seattle now they're focusing on Christians they're also focusing now on shotguns. Last week it was pistols to do with Elliot Roger. And this picture is interesting because it shows all the shotgun shells, or hulls, I should say, scattered. And uh, the tape, of course, always the tape. So he was pepper sprayed by another student. And uh, you notice God's Block Ministries that uh, they're focusing on shotguns and Christians. Uh, something interesting about this too is, you know, they go into, uh, at the bottom, just a minute, they go into um, kind of ritualistic circles of prayer. It, that's fine, you know, but it's almost like they're starting to use a cult mentality in all of these schools or education centers. Isn't this just the height of... Uh, you know, subliminal, subliminal messaging is um, make your life count. Um, okay, I wanted to take a look at this one. You see all of the tape out. They've secured the area, and now they bring the dogs in? That doesn't make sense to me, but okay. So, uh, point here, shotgun shells, really focusing on shotguns, and... Uh, there is a connection when you go into uh, these circles in, in the educational system and this whole premise of unity, strength, solid, uh, solidarity within themselves. Uh, Kate Slate had put out a while ago a really good video on Sandy Hook One Million Bones and it talked about a, a lot of the ritualistic patterns that these institutions are starting to take. And it's, um, it seems like they're ritualistic in nature. So yeah, go ahead and click on the uh, link in the description. That is not fantastic uh, quality there. Huh. But, I, the but uh, and, and what she goes into, I, I highly recommend you go and check out this video because it's very informative on the push that they're trying to do to indoctrinate your children in this cult mindset. So let's get on to the Canadian story today. Was a Rambo-style killer finally surrenders. So it talks about this guy. Now, something very, very clear here. It says the Royal Mounted Canadian Mounted Police arrested suspect uh, early Friday after 24-hour manhunt. Now, earlier on this <laughs> picture, it had said, this. these pictures change continuously, but it had definitely said that they had tweeted this picture. This was the RCMP had tweeted this picture. Well, now, of course, it changes. The article's changed. Oh, I'm so sick of that. You try and capture that, and, and it changes every second. So when I started this video, it had said that they had tweeted this. Well, if they were that close to him, why didn't they just capture him? Come on, that's not that far away. And a camera phone does not zoom. So, you know, is this a setup? Notice the bicycle again, representative of children. I'll, um, I'll uh, go through this a bit with you. Lots of bikes. Uh, something that was really interesting, DMAC, Another researcher had uh, noticed something really particular about some of these pictures. 
um, we really notice that they're militarizing our police. You know, all of this is almost overkill. Now, this is a picture in question. Prom Killam Drive. Very interesting. They really, really focused on it, right? They block off Killam Road. Well, it's no, it's drive. It's here they say road, but I think this is a very big cue. Uh, you notice how lately um, Sandy Hook, the parents are uh, these two scientists are pushing for a ten million dollar grant in order to start monitoring or being able to monitor people with like a, a mind uh, wire uh, for uh, precognitive or pre-crime so that they will be able to understand if they're mentally ill prior to you know allowing them to hold guns or or be in society basically I think is what the whole idea behind that is but let's look at this prom kill AM drive. Well, started thinking about that and looking at this picture of uh, of a map that they had provided for everybody. I'm just I'm just scrolling through these quickly because I want to get to this particular map. See again, let me let me make note all these shotgun shells. That's probably about two boxes of shells. Uh, a box of shell holds 25 shells. So, you know, this is easily a box or two of shells. It's not a big deal. And you go out in the woods, you shoot off some shells, you pick up your hulls, and away you go. Um, so, let's look at this map. This I found really, really interesting. Because you look at the shape of the map, it's in the shape of a pyramid. A pyramid that they're s focusing their uh, work on. Now, when we look into some of this, uh, here's an older RCMP car. The windows are shot out. There was a focus today also on the expense of uh, equipment and that. Well, here you got a brand new, this is a Ford, <laughs> this is a Dodge. They probably rammed something, hurrying up and getting to the scene because he's got a leak now in his rad or no, I don't think that'd be his radiator, more his transmission, but probably hit the pan on something in a big rush to get to the scene. But now they're switching over to the high-end Dodge Chrysler products. So probably interesting to look into a new contract from Ford to Chrysler to Dodge. Um, what I wanted to note was that uh, I started thinking about this map, and DMAC and I looked into this shape thinking that you know it's a pyramid and thinking about this Killam drive and them stipulating that it was road well interestingly enough we did research on it and we came up with uh, we came up with Killam school we did a big search it comes out of Massachusetts and if you look the shape is almost the same. So going a little further into research and, and finding the area, look at this. This is the capstone of a huge pyramid, basically. And it's interesting, Yankee Division Highway. Yankee Division. Well, wouldn't that be what they're trying to do is create division between us? Um, also, this Charles Street Harvest... Um, we started looking into each of these streets. Well, Wakefield Street looks almost identical. And I'm going to show it to you here. Wakefield almost looks identical to this street here. Do you see what we mean by almost looks identical? The curvature, the way it curves up. Yes, this is a little more wider, but the shape is generally the same. Now, what's important about this is that when you're trying to do gun control, they bring in the children a lot. And where are your little treasures? Well, kill them school. Now, prom or um, uh, promenade or prom as in graduation. So we'll graduate to killing in the AM. I'm wondering if possibly it could be a doctor that does it. 
and I'm thinking that it's going to be at Killam School in Massachusetts. So hopefully, you know, and here's the thing, a happy face by Petunia Clown. Well, every time we've seen clowns in the in the news, it ends up being a hoax of some sort or um, a false flag is imminent. So here, of course, we see happy face clown, kill em, school, prom, kill em, drive. And the shape of this looks the same. I found... I found that really interesting, and it was DMAC who actually um, recognized the sign, and then I recognized the shape, and we had done a search. We thought maybe at a prom they would kill somebody in the AM in the morning, and possibly a doctor, but then the whole word we searched was kill them. We come up with Massachusetts School of a pr uh, Preschool, and their little treasures. So, very interesting stuff, and it, you know, they pull, they're they pulling that pre-crime on us. Well, I think we need to look at the pre-crime that they're doing. I think they're using these events to announce the next event. So, and being it's, a, it's the capstone, this might be the capstone that will have everybody turn in their guns. Now, uh, back to the thing regarding the Rambo event that happened here in Canada uh, today. It did wrap up. They did find the sus suspect, but not after. They uh, kind of threw out there, which I thought was so hilarious. Uh, one, wait, let me go back here. Look at this. This is the police car, uh, Nissan Altra, uh, right? Altera. Um, notice it's a ghost car. Notice that the blood, of course, comes from here, awful lot of blood, yet uh, it seems to show on the council that there wasn't so much. Either way, why are these two ghost cars harassing this guy? Why did he shoot at these guys? You know, and both of them are ghost cars. This isn't an ordinary uh, police vehicle. Neither is this. This may be more so than others, but not this one, not you know, it's surprising, but here's a little bit of blood on the inside, a little bit on the outside. Um, my point here, sorry, I'm a little tired, but my point on this was the fact, uh, one, the map, uh, the way it looks, and uh, two, that they're, replace, they're replacing old equipment, but there were some other pictures in here that I thought after the conversations that the police had with everybody saying, of course, how much, how expensive, so on and so forth. See this officer, he, he has his hand on the trigger. You know, he's not trained in handling firearms. You never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to pull the trigger. Um, there was some pictures in here that showed um, Brinks trucks. And these Brinks trucks were used by the police so I think what they're trying to push for is more money because they're saying, going to say, look, we need more of these military vehicles. Isn't that hilarious? A porta potty at the scene. I can't believe that one. It's like, is this a stage? Oh, here he is again. You know, the guy, the cop, different angles, right? Uh, but a porta potty on the scene again kind of seems staged to me. Um, oh, the hug. You know, this, this guy is the biggest sellout in the country uh, for firearms. Um, I just want to get back to the fact of these Brinks trucks being used. There were several of them in various pictures showing um, uh, them utilizing them. Now, isn't this a blimmel me messaging? A1 stop, you know, premium service, uh, the red and the blue. Uh, the red and blue, of course, if you mix them together, they make purple heliotrope. Um, okay, here, here's a big brink struck being used by the military. So, shocks. Yeah. Um, there was another one where three brink trucks were being used in one scene. Of course, these pictures are always changing. It's, ju it's just you have to screen capture them right away. 
but I guess what I would have to do, I guess I should go here. Can't even click on any of these. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they had Brinks trucks being used. I, I think what their whole idea of that is, is that they're going to need more money to get these military vehicles. Um, another thing I noticed is this has been going all around up here. Uh, three RCMP officers were shot and killed by a lone gunman in Moncton, New Brunswick. At least two others were injured by gunfire. Here are the five deadliest RCMP shootings. So fallen RCMP. Click the image to read the stories. Of course, it talks about 2005. This was a fellow that they bothered at this ranch for a long time. It, it escalated and these officers died you know, so on and so forth. But you look at this, since 1865, 255 officers in the line of duty who have in total been killed. Well, I found that astounding compared to when, you know, you have um, video footage on the news all the time of uh, officers just blatantly walking up to people. So I guess apparently this guy called the officer a female, uh, a bitch, and she shot him. That's it. So unjustifiable homicide. You know, it, it's homic It's murder, period, murder. So when you look on the sidelines and you see, you know, power-hungry cop kills guy, you know, fight police, you know, attack man, cop kills unarmed man, you know, shoot, 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 shoot. They, they're all shooting unarmed, unarmed men or you know, for no apparent reason. So when you look at the statistics of 255 uh, killed in a line of duty since 1865, I'm sure the numbers are far outweigh um, the amount of people that they have killed unjustifiably. Um, I think that's about it. I just wanted to hope that possibly we can get around an event that may be in the planning works this is a capstone on a pyramid. And uh, we want to take a look also at Wakefield Street, the part of the capstone. Um, uh, it was Charles Wakefield, and he was the first Viscount. This is what I found very interesting. Uh, DMAC found this. is uh, uh, In his day, Wakefield was one of the most prominent and well-known characters in the town of Hythe, Kent. And the official yearbook of the Hythe Town Council is a list of freemen of the borough, borough uh, describes him as Hythe's greatest benefactor. He was created a free man of the borough on the 30th, 1930. Well, isn't that interesting? Was he not a free man before? Under the provisions of the 1885 Honorary Freedom of the Borough Act, his name appears on many memorial inscriptions in Hyde today and also lives on as the name of one of the town's Masonic lodges. So the connections here are astounding that, uh, you know, he's connected to the Masonic lodges. He's connected to, um, you know, this town that we were looking into. Uh, you know, so much of this is all connected. We have to recognize this. Also, we look at Yankee Division Highway. So Yankee Division is what they want, American Division. So we find that uh, the symbolism of this is the YD. Um, it is the 26th Infantry Division. And, uh, you know, connection here is that it's Massachusetts, Boston again. And that, uh, you know... It, it just all comes together, Massachusetts Army, National Guard, Boston, you know, it, the whole thing, they're all connected to one another, these events, you know, the symbolism, the uh, culture of, you know, indoctrination, schools, the lone gunman, you know, last week's stabbing, this week's guns, uh, also last week's stabbing of the 12-year-olds, you know, it, militarizing, this, all my points are the prom, the RCMP, <laughs> you know, it just goes on and on, uh, you know, unjustifiable deaths, and of course the capstone, so the whole pyramid of this scheme, hopefully we can 
get around this scheme and that reveal it before it actually happens in regard to this picture. I think it's probably a very important point that it is Killam Road when in fact it is Killam Drive. So this is just uh, kind of an overview and uh, the suspect has been arrested. He was captured. So everything's connected everybody and I hope you realize that all of these events come together into one big circle and it, it just leads to indoctrination of the public and propaganda. So I do want you to recognize this is not Canada. This is not what we represent. This has never been the Canadian police. These police, you know, they're carrying these little things on their back. Jeff C. noticed them. You know, if they're tranquilizers or this is a normal police procedure here out the window. This is not. So we need to consider that and, and we need to consider what's behind this agenda. Oh, please, people, please consider this agenda. And all it's about it is, is one man. Especially, please question this story when the police tweeted out that picture of him casually walking by, fully armed and loaded. Question this. Why did they tweet this out? Who got these pictures so close? What? Oh, it, it, it's astounding. You know, police officers with their guns drawn. Okay, thank you so much for listening. We look forward to you checking out maxresistance.com and checking into the articles that we provide. Thank you for watching. Bye.